Hello and welcome to this special video summary of BN America's Mining Outlook 2021. I'm Laura Superno, Senior Editor at BN Americas, and I'm joined by our senior reporting team for the mining sector, Rogerio Gelmeyer, Sam Williams, and Conchetta Cacciatore. This video will provide an overview of the trends that will shape mining activity in Latin America in 2021, starting with the broad uh, industry-wide themes, and then we'll take a look at what to expect in the region's key mining markets. Our full 2021 Mining Outlook report is available uh, to Be in America subscribers on our platform, or if you're watching in YouTube, click on the link in the description to download a summary report. So what we're seeing is that in general terms, uh, for most mining companies, optimization of assets will be the main priority for 2021. Optimization has already been a key focus for several years now, but the experience of the pandemic uh, in 2020 has really solidified the need for optimization and efficiency. Even during the peak of the pandemic in countries where mines were allowed to keep operating, production remained at high levels uh, with surprisingly large uh, reductions of staff, and this experience is going to accelerate moves toward automation, digitalization, and working with fewer people on the ground. There also appears to be a very real risk of future COVID-19 outbreaks next year, and having those measures in place and being prepared for the possible outbreaks is going to be a big focus. Some operators have had to significantly adjust their processes already to adapt to this new environment and they'll be continuing to solidify those adaptations. Another issue that has intensified over the last year or two is uh, country risk with growing social or political turbulence in several countries in the region and combined with this persistent uncertainty about the pandemic and also uh, uncertainty about the economic recovery from the pandemic the environment is not going to be very conducive to launching large new capital projects next year. So the slowdown of the investment pipeline uh, brings also this need to really maximize existing assets. And the overall outcome of these factors is this heightened focus on optimization. Our 2020 mining survey showed that this is what the sector participants were feeling already a few months ago, and the experts that we consulted for this outlook report uh, really agreed that this is going to continue to be the top priority in 2021. So now I'd like to turn it over to Sam Williams, who will go into further detail about what we're seeing for next year in terms of COVID risks, uh, prices, spending, and costs. Sam. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, um, COVID-19 had a major impact on the region's mining companies in 2020. And while the industry has responded well to the pandemic, the effects will continue to be felt in 2021 and maybe much longer. Um, while nearly all mines are now back in operation, production is likely to be impacted next year due to the reduced number of people able to work on site. Um, as well as delays to optimization, expansion and maintenance works. So um, for many miners, production costs um, are also going to be pushed higher. Um, this is both due to the lower production and the cost of pandemic related protocols such as virus testing, enhanced cleaning practices and hiring additional staff to cover for absenteeism. So the payoff for the companies is going to be staying in operation and capturing high prices which have really been a silver lining for the industry from the pandemic. So gold and silver have surged to multi-year highs in part um, due to the stimulus packages um, by governments globally in response to the pandemic. Um, we've also got iron ore, also obviously at very healthy levels and the outlook for metals such as copper and zinc is also, is also positive. Um, so, yeah, as you can see from the from the chart, um, future spikes of COVID-19 were a key concern um, raised in our mining survey. But measures taken in 2020 have also prepared the industry well to minimise any potential disruption from further peaks in cases. Um, there's also been um, recently some major advances in vaccine development, um, which would also help ease industry cons concerns although it does remain unclear how quickly these will, um, will become widely available among, among the population. And yeah, and so 
it appears that 2021 is going to be a good time to be a mining company with healthy prices resulting in, in strong profits. And um, so really the question becomes what mining, mining companies do with all this cash. Um, we don't expect to see a huge surge in CapEx in the Latin American mining industry next year, as companies' capacity for spending will be limited with the COVID-19 protocols and travel restrictions. And mining companies are also going to have other priorities for cash, um, including paying dividends to, to shareholders. So, yeah, as Laura, Laura mentioned, the focus um, is going to be on optimising existing assets rather than growth, although there could be a pickup in the approval of new product projects once the pandemic is, is brought under control. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, you know, we did see a lot of mining companies reduce their capital spending plans last year already. Um, and you mentioned just now that there uh, is kind of uncertainty about what could happen with spending. I mean, what do you expect for CapEx in Latin America? Could we see an increase or possibly a decrease next year? Yeah, thank you, Laura. Um, well, um, it's probably worth pointing out that um, BMO Capital Markets has um, forecast a 5% improvement in CapEx globally in the mining sector. From 2020 levels um, but um, again as, as you mentioned the political un uncertainty uh, but particularly in countries such as Chile and Peru is likely to weigh on on spending in the region so um, I think broadly we can expect capex in Latin America to be broadly flat um, at best we'd be looking at a, a small increase but overall no no huge change Okay, excellent. Well, I don't know if that's excellent actually for the industry, but thank you very much uh, for the insights. Okay, so we will now take a look around the region at some of the primary issues we expect to see next year at the country level. Uh, let's start with Rogerio Gelmeyer. Rogerio, um, what can we expect to see for the mining sector in Brazil in 2021? Okay, Laura, the mining segment in Brazil is expected to show a positive performance in the next year due to the combination of the continued strong demand from China, which is likely to invest more in the infrastructure side, and also due to the projected recovery of the Brazilian economy. For the next year, economists expect an uh, expansion of 3.5% of Brazil GDP following a projected recession of 4.5% this year due to the pandemic. And under this scenario, the prices for certain commodities, those more important for Brazil's Brazilian sectors, such as iron ore and gold, is projected to stay at high levels. Among this positive scenario for Brazil in the next year, the administration of Jair Bolsonaro is planning to go ahead with several mining actions for the next months that could lead to a total capex of 1.4 billion reais. Those projects comprise auctions for exploration rights of a phosphate project in Pernambuco and the Paraíba states, along with a cooper deposit in Goiás state and a coal set in Rio Grande do Sul state. Also, the government is working with a local mining association to, to facilitate a regulation for the access of mining companies to raise cash via local stock exchange, reducing bureaucracies, mainly for small and medium-sized firms to tap equity mar markets. Perfect. Um, um, and Rogério, you know, Brazil has been one of the countries that was really a hot spot in terms of uh, COVID-19 infections, but really has kept the economy relatively open. Um, what do you see um, as the impacts of a potential second wave of infections um, for the mining sector next year in Brazil? Exactly, Laura. Brazil was one of the most affected countries in the world in terms of fatalities and infections by COVID. And after a reduction in the number of cases in the third quarter of this year, in recent weeks, however, the number of cases is showing signs of increase, especially across major cities of the country. However, since the start of the pandemic, the mining segment remained resilient as the federal government classified the sector as an essential activity 
and even with local governments adopting social distance measures, the mining segment were able to continue with, with its regular operations. So, in the case of a second wave, the impact looks limited here in Brazil in terms of production. Has the status of essential activity of the segment likely to remain in place? And they also had the technology implemented in the mining activity accelerated during the pandemic with more automation in place by companies. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rogerio. Um, let's move okay. over to, to Chile now. Uh, Conchetta Cacciatore, please. Um, tell us what you're seeing in terms of the trends or the events uh, shaping Chile's mining sector next year. Thank you, Laura. Chile's mining industry started to move forward after months working with reduced workforce due to the global health crisis and current portfolio of projects that were of $74 billion in investments by 2029 could pave the country's way to reach over 6 million tons in copper production. From those 74 billion, around 9 billion are expected to be invested in the next two years. However, the country should streamline permits processes so, so projects stuck in permitting phase can advance. In Chile, investors continue to ask for more legal certainty, especially now that a mining policy for the next 30 years is being designed while a bill to protect glaciers and prohibit mining in surrounding areas await for approval. This bill has been stuck in Congress since October 2019, as mining authorities have been calling for better definitions in order to avoid the stoppage of Codelco's operations, for example. If the document is approved and it's in its current form without any changes, Codelcos El Teniente and Andina Copper Mines would have to stop operations and more than, more than 30,000 jobs could be lost. This could also block any chance for new mining discoveries in the country's north central area. Another big legal sit situation for 2021 will be the constitutional debate after Chileans voted in October to write a new constitution. Investment decisions may face a cautious period until a new constitution is approved, but projects will continue to advance with studies and engineering. Among the topics that the industry expects would be included in discussions are the Glacier Bill and also mining property. This one, in order to set the obligation to do exploration works instead of only paying a fee to maintain the concession. Perfect, thank you. Um, and what um, what can we expect for Chile's uh, lithium sector next year in terms of regulation and allowing investment in this area? Regarding lithium, the Mining Ministry and the Nuclear Energy Commission are working on a document about procedures to ask for lithium commercialization quotas, which, which isn't yet standardized. And jointly with the Inter-American Development Bank, the Ministry is currently preparing three lithium-related studies to develop ways for sustainable lithium brine exploitation and establish Chile's role in the added value lithium chain. Perfect. Um, Conchetta, you also cover Colombia's mining sector. What are you seeing uh, for mining there next year? In Colombia, the mining sector jointly with energy will be key for sustainable reactivation in the coming years as represents over 20% of the country's total exports, generating 350,000 direct jobs and over 1 million indirect. In the coming years, the Energy and Mining Ministry plans to prioritize projects worth approximately $9.5 billion, which is around 36 trillion pesos, in order to generate over 50,000 jobs. And in, in terms of uh, just specific efforts from the government to really boost the mining sector, what are you seeing for next year? The country is currently making efforts to diversify the sector by attracting more investment in gold, copper, nickel and emeralds. So it is expected that in 2021, the government auctions over 30 potential blocks of mining concessions for new projects and efforts to formalize up to 110,000 informal miners are also underway. For example, they recently simplified requirements to grant concessions for small miners. 
And finally, I think it's interesting that executives of the Toronto Stock Exchange have recently said that Colombia's political stability and its business favorable favorable environment is getting attention from foreign investors. And this may increase the number of companies with Colombian assets within the TSX, which today reach 30 companies. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Conchetta. Coming back now to Sam. Sam, one of your specialty areas of coverage is Mexico. Could you give us uh, the overview of what you expect to see in that country next year? Yeah, thanks, Laura. So um, in Mexico, uh, relations between the mining industry and the administration of President Andres López Obrador, or AMLO, have been strained by a long list of developments. These range from proposals to nationalise the emerging lithium mining industry to the scrapping of the mining undersecretary post, along with criticism of the industry's environmental and social track record and statements by AMLO opposing handing out any new mining concessions. AMLO has also signalled in the past that he will consider overhauling mining reg regulations around the middle of his six-year term, which would fall around late 2021, um, with a focus on tougher environmental standards and possibly some form of community consultation over mining projects. So against this backdrop, it is no surprise that mining companies and industry bodies um, are warning that political uncertainty is holding back investment. Um, moving over to the project side, the main project due to come on stream in 2020 is the Juan Escipio Silver Gold Asset, which is a $440 million project being developed by Fresneo and Mag Silver, um, which is due to conclude around the middle of the year. Other projects which may come into production in 2021 include Equinox Gold's Los Filos Gold Mine Expansion, for which CapEx is currently estimated at $213 million, and Orla Mining's Camino Rojo gold project, which has a price tag of $123 million. Um, it's worth pointing out that feasibility studies are currently ongoing at both projects, which could result in scope changes and higher ca CapEx, um, which could also push production first production back into 2022. And how is the um, security situation in Mexico uh, evolving um, now? And how do you how do you expect that to affect mining companies next year? Yes, um, obviously, um, security is is a key concern for mining companies in Mexico. Um, so many mines are located in isolated areas and in states where powerful criminal cartels operate. Um, there has been an apparent increase in highly organized armed robberies targeting mining companies in places um, such as Sonora, um, while Zacatecas state, um, which is a big silver producing state, has um, also seen an increase in violence between rival cartels um, recently. Um, so Mexico's government has responded to the situation and they've launched a new mining police force, um, which has been tasked with um, improving security for mining companies. Um, the first unit of this force um, has now been put in place at the Fresnillo's Herradura mine in Sonora State, and there's another one to follow. Um, and it, there's, there's going to be a kind of national rollout of, of this force, but I think that could take some time, which means that uh, for smaller miners, they're probably not going to see any improvement or any benefit from that for some time to come. Yeah, sounds like it's going to continue to be a challenge then next year, but with some hope for improvement. Uh, thank you very much, Sam. Yes, thank you. So I'll now round out the discussion with a look at what we expect to see happening in Peru and Argentina next year. Um, Peru is definitely a country where the investment pipeline is going to take a double hit from political uncertainty and pandemic uncertainty. Um, former President Martin Vizcarra was ousted by Congress in November, which led to mass protests. Um, the interim president, Francisco Sagasti, will be in charge until mid-2021. Uh, mid um, the elections are still scheduled for April, and then the new president is scheduled to take office in July. Um, Peru has three major mining construction projects underway, and these projects, as well as its operating mines, are not expected to be uh, negatively affected by the political crisis, um, but new large investment projects could hold off 
uh, breaking ground until there is more political and legal clarity. Um, there are five construction projects in Peru that are in line to start works in 2021. Uh, those are San Gabriel, Corani, uh, Inmaculada, uh, the Inmaculada optimization, uh, Marcona tailings, and uh, Yanacocha sulfides. And these projects in total are going to need spending of over $3 billion, um, Yanacocha sulfides being the biggest at just over $2 billion uh, for just that one project. Um, Peru was also one of the worst affected countries in the region by the COVID pandemic in 2020, um, with mining output dropping around 50% in the first months of the pandemic. Um, but companies have invested significantly in social distancing, uh, testing and teleworking, and are likely to be better prepared um, in the event of new outbreaks next year. Argentina then is another country where mining activity in 2021 will be highly dependent on the political and economic situation and particularly structural changes in tax and monetary legislation that the Alberto Fernandez government may carry out to try to attract international investors um, and especially in the copper and lithium sectors. The two factors that are holding back the industry now are the restrictions on the purchase of dollars and the transfer abroad of dollars for the payment of dividends or loans, um, as well as constant modifications that um, on withholdings uh, of mining exports in recent years, um, taxes on mining exports. Um, this instability has caused many countries, um, which are advancing with development of lithium and copper projects, to slow them down or stop them entirely um, waiting for the situation to normalize or to at least receive a signal of what the rules are going to be um, so that they can make decisions for the medium term. And this is going to continue to be the case in, in 2021. We're going to see a lot of projects affected by this instability. So in conclusion, what we're seeing is a 2021, which is likely to be a profitable year for mining operators, uh, thanks to higher prices. But this, uh, of course, is going to be dependent on their ability to actually continue operating. And so mining companies are looking to be ready to respond in the event of future uh, pandemic outbreaks. This is accelerating optimi optimization uh, and efficiency programs, which is really going to be the key focus uh, for mining operators next year. Um, Many countries are going to be looking to support mining activity as part of their economic recovery, but then there are also important risks in terms of social and political turbulence that could slow down investment in a number of areas. That concludes this overview of our 2021 outlook for Latin American mining. Please remember that if you're watching uh, via YouTube, you can access a summary version of our outlook report by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you for watching.